All right, welcome back to TCI headquarters. Time for our first of the season preview and predictions video. Um, number one team in the country. That's it. Nice challenge right off the bat. Going to find out a whole lot. Um, Will, what are some of the keys you're looking at for this week? Yeah, so offensively, I think when you look at Clemson, they – the offensive line has got to get some kind of push. They really do. They got to win their one on one matchups. They got to try to control the line scrimmage, which is not going to be an easy task to do, and they're not going to win it on every play. Mm -hmm. They just need to win the majority of the plays. I think if they can do that, then Clemson's got a chance to do something. Um, so that's the first thing I look at offensively. Second thing I look at is Cade Klubnik and the receivers. They have to connect. And I don't mean on five yard little out passes and stuff like that. I'm talking. 15, 20 yards down the field. Those plays across the middle, they need to be done. Um, I know Georgia's got a great safety, um, all-American safety and all. They, they love him, and he can make plays. You can't be scared of him, though. you got you got to go attack the middle of the field because Clemson needs Jay Greenstool and those receivers to be playmakers in this game. If they can do that, then all of a sudden Clemson looks really good. Flip it over to the defensive side of the football, they got to force some turnovers. they got to get pressure on Carson Beck. They can't allow him – to do I think Georgia's running game is going to be interesting because, first of all, who's going to be the running back, right? Um, you want me to tell you? <laughs> who? It's going to be Trevor. You think so? You think he's not going to suspend him? You know, you wonder if they're going to suspend him or not. I mean, he went, He was, you know, Kirby yesterday. Who did they play week two? Yeah, I know. That's where he gets <laughs> suspended. Um, you know, and Kirby obviously doesn't care because look at the, you know, look at look at what's happened the last four or five years, right? So, um, it would be interesting to see, though, like, with the Georgia running game, you know, and I think Clemson's defensive front has to try to figure a way to win, as we said earlier um, in our, um, you know, Tuesday Tiger talk. You know, Clemson's got to figure a way to get around those big hogs and 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 cause some trouble in the backfield because if they can't, as Dabo said, if they can't get to, if they can't really shut the run game, then that allows that play action game going and Carson Beck has one of the best arms in college football he's very accurate with the deep throws and all of a sudden now you're doing play action and you're getting those receivers downfield mm -hmm. and that could cause a lot of problems so Clemson's defense the key for Clemson's defense is they got to shut the run game down they have to shut the run game down and as crazy as it sounds they got to make Carson Beck beat them all right I'm gonna flip it a little bit on you um you're saying Clemson needs to Calls turnovers. I'm going to start with a massive problem from last season. They can't afford to turn the ball over themselves yeah. in this game. You know, they cannot have the fumbles. They cannot have the interceptions. They're going to need to play, you know, not a perfect game, but definitely their A game to have a, a chance. Um, on the defensive side, kind of go with you. They're going to have to figure out how to limit the tight end, um, which is, you know, Georgia just rolled out the next – you know, all-American tight end. I don't know if I have a Brock Bauer, Seems but he'll like, probably be pretty good. He's, oh, he's really good. Yeah. Uh, Clemson recruited him heavily. Um, and they're going to have to figure out how to put pressure on the quarterback. I know you talked about the run game, so I won't go there. I think that's important as well. But we're going to have to see this front seven. I feel good about the back, back end. We're going to have to see this front seven and West pull some magic and just get back there and disrupt it. We talked about it in our Tuesday Tiger Talk. I think Demonte Capehart is going to be a huge part of what could be a, a big season for the Clemson defensive line. Mm -hmm. You know, we're finally seeing him reach his potential. He came in as a five-star, um, had to battle through injuries and some other things, but now he's he's a force. Yes, he is. Uh, and he can do a lot of things in that middle, um, which is going to open up things for the other guys on defensive line. It's going to open up Barrett Carter to do some things. We're going to see with that back end. You know, we can see Barnes. We can see a lot of – a lot of creativity from, from Wes. Um, the other thing I'll say is, and I talk a lot about this, I think the first quarter is going to be huge for this game. Clemson's got to come out and show that they're going to be in this game. Kind of like we saw with Georgia Tech and Florida State the other night, uh, or last Saturday. Florida State came out, boom, 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 two-point conversion. Everybody's like, oh, man, this thing's going to be over. Yeah, it's going to be over. Georgia Tech came right back down the field, boom, and, you know, they were – they were they showed, hey, we're going to be in this game. We're right not, away, they told We're, we're going to be in it for the, the long haul. So, Clemson's got to do that just because, you know, last year there were a lot of things went wrong, a lot of things with their confidence. You know, they've got a lot of confidence now, mm -hmm. but if Georgia comes out and punches you in the mouth in the first quarter – and things aren't going well, then it'll be easy to go back and say, oh, 
gosh, we're going right back to what we saw last year. So yeah. I think the first quarter is going to be going to be huge. Um, I'm interested to see the crowd. Neutral site game. We've talked about it a little bit before. I think it's probably going to be about 70, 30. Georgia, Clemson, I know you – I think you were thinking more 60, 40. Yeah, Gary Stokin said it was uh, 55, 45. Okay. So, uh, he said Clemson did – Clemson came out and did well. Sold a lot of tickets. So, he says it's 55, 45. Clemson's got the 55? Yeah, and Gary Stokin, by the way, is the president and CEO of the Chick-fil-A. He was on Will's so he podcast? Was, he was on our podcast last week. Last week. Yeah, he was. And uh, so, a great interview. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. It was very informative. He knows his football. I didn't realize he played football at NC State, and so you know he's a guy that knows. I realize that he either. knows what he's doing when he's watching, watching football, and um, so he actually he told a great story how he, uh, back in the '80s, he gets the years mixed up, which is always funny. But back in the '80s, he worked for Adidas, and Clemson and Georgia were both Adidas, mm. uh, you know, teams, and he's like, you know, so. You know, I was, he's like, I watched Georgia win their national championship in 1980 with Herschel Walker. Then I watched Clemson go and win it in 1981. He said, so that was pretty fun that I got to. My how things have changed. Yeah. He, uh, Two of the best, both with Adidas. Yeah, exactly. So kind of crazy, but a, but a really good story. Go back and listen to it. Uh, he was a great interview. He's on with us for about 30 or 40 minutes, and so it was really good. Cool. Yeah. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. Will and I can't just, we can't, we can't. Do do without going out on the limb here. Yeah, we got Annie up. Well, time for our predictions. I'm gonna let you start. Okay. All right. So we kind of gave the keys and what we think needs to happen. Um, you know, I think it's imperative. I agree with you. Clemson's got to get Georgia in third and long situations. Second down is the down to watch. Um, so I'm gonna tell you that. Pay attention to second down. If Clemson's defense can win that down, then Clemson's gonna be in position to win the football game. But they gotta win that down. Georgia is. Big on being in third and short situations, and that's how they set up their play action pass and things of that nature for third down. Um, also, you know, keep in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there as a prop for anybody out there that does prop bidding. Give me Khalil Barnes with at least one interception. In this and we game. can't be betting on college football. I'm not betting on it. I'm just saying, if you are out there, uh, Khalil Barnes with one interception, I'll, I'm telling you, he's going to grab one. The guy is a turnover-making machine. When did, I, I know you? I know you got some multiple things going. When did you start working for FanDuel? <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, I, I like, I like, I just, I just think Khalil Barnes is going to get an interception in this game. Um, as far as the game goes, I think Clemson's going to keep this close. Uh, I think Clemson's going to do what you said. They're going to come out and show some fight. Uh, Dabo made it clear very early in fall camp that this was he was not going to be embarrassed on national TV for a second year in a row, and that uh, this time if they are, it's on the players, it's not on him. He says I'm not losing sleepless nights because my team wasn't prepared to play. So he's like, you know, this is not going to happen. So Dabo from the beginning of camp has been stressing how this team needs to go out and play well in this game and why it's important for them to. So. With that said, I don't think Clemson's going to win the game, but I think Clemson plays well, and I think in the end Georgia pulls away with a late score late. I think Georgia 27, Clemson 17. Georgia by 10. Yep, Georgia by 10. That's a little more than I thought you were going. That changed my prediction. Well, the spread is 13 and a half. So. Yeah, okay. Um, I know Dabo said all that. He's not going to be on him this year. Yep. But you know what? The Jimmys and the Joes that are on the roster – that's on Dabo. <laughs> right? I mean, that's on Dabo and the, his philosophies. Yeah. Um, the last time they played and they had that, you know, game where nobody could score a touchdown except for the, the pick six in Charlotte. Correct. The talent on those two teams, Clemson, of course, coming off their glory days, the talent on those t- two teams was pretty close. Yeah, it was, yeah. This year, the talent on these two teams is not close. Not, especially on the offensive side. It's not. Yeah. It's just not. Um, Clemson has not done as nearly as well as Georgia recruiting. Georgia actually uses the transfer portal to bring in a player here from Alabama or Ohio State or, or whatever. So the rosters are not, are not the same. Now, Clemson's roster is better this year because they still got the tail end of some of those years where they did a little better, and they've still got a, a quarterback that was a you know five-star quarterback. Um, but you know, the Jimmys and Joes are usually the difference. And that's kind of, I mean, you had Georgia winning by 10. Um, you guys know, I'm always the optimistic guy. I'm always, man, Clemson's going to win. Clemson's going to win. Clemson's going to win big when things are going well. I can't come out to start the season after watching what happened last year and watch what happens the last few years. Um, 
they're going to have to prove it to me. Yeah. They're going to have to prove. I think pieces are in place for some things to be different. I think the wide receiver depth and the talent they just brought in is certainly a move in the right direction. Offensive line looks better on paper going into the season, but, you know, just because the guy's coming back for another year doesn't mean all of a sudden he's going to be a great player. Right. So I've got to – again, I've got to see that offensive line prove it. I think they've got a chance to do that. you got to do like Georgia Tech did. Yeah. Their offensive they, line proves They've it. got to prove it. Yeah. Um, and my big question mark is the quarterback. Um, Cage is not proving it. No, not yet. He's not proving it. I know everybody's talking about, oh, he finished the bowl game great. Okay, well, that's Kentucky. This is Georgia. Kentucky, <laughs> right? It's just Kentucky. Kentucky. That's Steve Look at the bowl game Clemson was in. Um, so – We've heard a lot of great things about how Kate's changed. I've heard a lot behind the scenes, as you have, Will, just about the leadership. We heard, we were hearing all that before everybody started talking about it, mm -hmm. about the differences. Um, and there were some concerns there last year. So that has changed. Um, but, again, I'm going to have to – the pocket presence and some of the questions I have that we haven't seen from see Cade, it. I've talked to some coaches, and it's like, you know, do those things get better or do you have it or you don't have it? And that's what we're going to – find out so I don't think Clemson's going to win this game I hope I'm wrong I hope they would do it'd be huge for the program um I was actually going to probably go with the exact score that you picked oh really yes well, I, uh, that I think Clemson's going to win <laughs> or going to lose by double digits in this one so I'll tweak my score a little bit and I'll go um Georgia 31 Clemson 17 uh so, so I'll Georgia go covers for Georgia you. Co I'll go on the other side of the cover yeah um, you know, I hope – we've talked a lot about it. I hope Clemson can at least stay close. I don't know that 10 points is close. Um, well, it depends on how the 10 points is. Like yeah, if Georgia scores late, like I'm saying. Clemson need – for the narrative that's happened the last two or three years, Clemson really needs to go out and at least, you know, keep this thing within a touchdown or something to get a good narrative because yeah. we know where most of the people go with the narrative regardless of the facts against Clemson. That's so, true. big game, um, you know, win or lose – um, with the 12-team playoff, you still got a great shot at making the playoff if you can do things after this game. But by golly, if Clemson could come out here and win, then we're talking about different things next week. By the way, if Clemson does come out and win, that will be the first team since 1990 to knock off the preseason number one in opening week. And see, Will's one of these history guys, right? He's like, man, you know, last time Clemson did this, they had a noon game and it was on ABC. Yeah, you want me to throw that one No, out? I don't because I, I tell him that's got nothing to do last with Last time that. Clemson beat Georgia in the state of Georgia was 1986, as we all know. Uh, Robert was there. Uh, um, he was a senior that year, your senior year, I think. I was not a senior. I was a junior. Junior But year, go ahead. Okay. Um, but you were there. And Clemson um, – Actually, I was senior. <laughs> See, I remember uh, what you tell me. Uh, Clemson, anyway, last time they won was 86. That was a noon kickoff. It was on ABC, and Georgia was introducing a new UGA, which is what's happening this year. So, hey, who knows? History Line all of that up, and Will always says history repeats now, itself, but yet he still picks Georgia by 10. Yeah, I do, because i got to be realistic. I don't get it. However, in the reverse psychology of all that, the thing that sucks about this coming up week is Georgia's uh, celebrity person or former player that's going to do the coin toss. Clemson's is A.J. Terrell. Georgia's is Kevin Butler. And if anybody out there remembers Kevin Butler, he kicked a 60-yard field goal to knock off second-ranked Clemson. In remember that well. So, anyway, so there's that too. <laughs> so, next week, don't bet your house. We'll come in and uh, um, we'll have a different uh, lineup. We'll have facts. The talking season will be over. We'll know. Whether some of these things that we think might be improved with Clemson are improved they are or, what? or not. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned to TCI. We will be down there this weekend. Uh, JP will be down there with us. Bart will be down there. So we'll have great coverage for, for you from Atlanta and, uh, f you know, right up through the game and Dabo Sunday and all this stuff. So excited. Hopefully you guys are excited. Hopefully everybody has a great Weekend, first real weekend of football, and stay tuned to the Clemson Insider for the most complete coverage of Clemson athletics and recruiting. This is Miles Murphy. Make sure to check out Clemson Insider's most complete football coverage. Nobody does it better.